My friends, and welcome to another edition of 15241 Today Talk. Uh, Glenn Ward is our producer director, Linda Dedzinski is our coordinating producer, and Jim Render and I are honored to have as our guest today the basketball coach here at Upper St. Clair High School, Danny Holzer. Danny, uh, why don't you get, you coaches, you get this thing started. <laughs> Give us some talk, some coach talk here. <laughs> I'm not qualified. Anyhow, uh, 25 years ago, I got a phone call at my house, and it was Danny uh, asking me for a little advice and help because he had applied for the Upper St. Clair basketball job. And uh, boy, I think Danny will agree. It just doesn't seem like it was that long ago. But here it is. He's uh, uh, coming in on his 25th year of very successful coaching basketball here at Upper St. Clair. Comment on that, Danny. Well, it, it certainly doesn't seem like 25 years either. As I look back from the from when we started, uh, it certainly has gone uh, very quickly. But it's been a tremendous honor and privilege, and, and we've had so many, um, so many, uh, so many great memories, so many uh, great seasons. Uh, you know, the ups and downs of coaching, but uh, here at Upper St. Clair, our, our the team that I have this year coming up reminds me of the one we had when we first started. Upper St. Clair kids seem to be the same type of kids, and, and they're very coachable. And it's made a 25 years go fast because I've had so much fun and, and have appreciated the, the, uh, the journey. You and I have shared some great kids. I mean, I always we, think I've been very blessed here. I'm sure you feel the same way. Absolutely. Uh, when you think back, there's there's so many. When you think back to 25 years, all the kids that we've we've shared, and uh, um, you know, the, the, you know, you'll, there's so many names. You know, Sean Lee, Pete Coughlin, um, you know, all those guys. Uh, Connor Lee as well, and and uh, I think back to Jason the Conwell Bummer, brothers. Yeah, the Conwell brothers, Dakota and Dane, who still are, we get to see today. And we go way back to the beginning. I'll throw a name match at Jason Basson. Oh my! Remember yeah. Jason, the lineman from Penn State, when I first got here, he was uh, a uh, two-way player as well. So yeah, and there's so many more, but those are just to name a few that kind of come to the. He he, he won a lot of uh, in the grand scheme of things. He won medals in basketball, and football, both. He did, yeah. Mm -hmm. And ninety, yeah, ninety six. We we were fortunate to win it, and I think you guys were in two straight championship games uh, those yeah. two years. I think. Mm -hmm. It, it, refresh my memory. One WPIAL title. Uh, two. You have two. two. Mm -hmm. Ninety six and 05. 05. Yeah, and then we lost to Penn Hills in 03 in the finals. So we've um, we've been able to get there a few times. Hopefully, we have a couple more in the future here. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Thomas Jefferson graduate. Yes. And that's where you still reside. Yes, Jefferson Hills graduated TJ in 1983. Mm -hmm. You're young. <laughs> Wish I graduated in 1983. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> he is younger than we are, that's for sure, yes. Um, you celebrated your 400th win in uh, February of this year. What do you remember about that night? Well, I, my, I, I do know that I didn't say anything, but my players for the, the week prior knew that we, we were, that we were close to getting 400, and I think the Game, the game before Bethel Park, we lost uh, at Cannon McMillan, and I could just tell that game um, there was they just they were they weren't the same. They weren't loose, weren't playing the way they wanted. I think everybody was nervous, wanted to get this win so much for our program, and um, uh, then we came to Bethel. We were we were really on a run too. I think at the time we were like sixteen and two or something, and, but we were still in the still in the bulk of the season. Um, and everybody was uh, was excited and fired up as a home game. We had a great crowd, and we got off to a slow start. We were trailing by eight, ten points, and finally caught them and went into overtime. Then in the overtime, we just I said, "Hey, fellas, okay, en enough. Let's just let's go play. Let's do what we do, and put this thing to bed." And and, and we won by eleven in overtime. We put we played really well. So, it, I was really happy for our team because we were we had played a team that was uh, that was really coming after us. We were we weren't playing well. We were trailing. But, but like last year's teams always seem to do, find, we just find a way to win collectively. And I was I, I've, thinking back of all the, all the wins we've had, that's, that's one of my prior ones just was because that the of the adversity. Night that, uh, Chris Pantelis drained that uh, three. Oh, that, that was Peter's Township. 
Yeah, we were we were early in the year. We were playing Peters at home. We were down by 17 in the fourth quarter. We came all the way back and at the buzzer regulation, we were down three, and Chris got loose and hit the three to put in the overtime. Then we then we really pulled away in overtime. Yeah. That was a, that was a memorable one as well. Well, let's go back a little bit. Um, uh, you graduated from TJ, and you went to Alliance College to play basketball. Yes. Tell us about that, and then and then I'll. Fast forward, then he transferred to Edinburgh. Yeah, we went to went to Alliance. It was a small private school, um, and it, we were in the NAI, the old, that old district with Waynesburg, Westminster, and Point Park, and Grove City, Geneva, and all them. And then got to play there for a couple of years. And then the uh, the it was a small private school, so they kind of um, they ran out of funds to, to support athletics. And so uh, they, we, the program was shut down, and um, I transferred to Edinburgh and got my degrees from Edinburgh. And um, really enjoyed my, my two years there, for sure. It was in, uh, when you played at Alliance, did you play against uh, Waynesburg and uh, Rudy Marisa? Was he the coach? Yes, yes. And, and as a matter of fact, their their point guard was Tim McConnell. Oh, was yeah, it? Yeah, no, so that was kind of fun. <sighs> Rudy was the coach, and uh, Timbo was their was the point guard. And they they you know he reminds me often because we talk every day. They beat us four times in those two years. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the friendship with Tim started, huh? Well, we started uh, – I knew Tim and their, and their whole family back when I was in high school. Oh, okay. Bas- through basketball camps, yeah. And um, – Tell – you told me a little story a little while ago about driving from Edinburgh to be a volunteer coach at TJ. Talk about that. Yeah, I was fortunate enough uh, when I knew I was going to transfer to Edinburgh and, and wasn't going to be playing basketball. I was – such a big part of my life I said I, I got to do something and, and I can't be away from the sport so um, my high school coach was still coaching at TJ and and I, I said well, is there anything you think I could do to help or be, be like a student like a student assistant or something and he said absolutely he said you can come to the games Tuesday and Friday during the week and practices on the weekend I saw oh, that's no problem so I went out and my dad bought me a $500 78 four-door Chevy Impala and that was my car. I thought I was like the richest guy on earth. I had this big, big car and go student teach at Meadville on Tuesday. Soon it was over. I drive to wherever the game was, help coach the JV and varsity, and then drive back to my apartment in Edinburgh. And then on weekends I would coach Friday and stay stay there till Monday morning, and then drive to Meadville for my student teaching assignment. And uh, never thought anything of it. I thought this was your coach great. at uh, TJ was uh, Coach Sharkey. Yes. Did you ever meet his brother? Rudy? I did a few times, yes. Mm-hmm. Rudy was quite a legendary football coach in the state of Ohio. Mm-hmm. Well, then eventually you uh, matriculated to Duquesne University as an assistant coach. Talk about that. That's that's pretty good <laughs> level of basketball. Yes, I was uh, I was real fortunate there too. I worked a lot of camps, five star, and you know, that was a and Metro Index, and got to meet a lot of people. And through the help of Tom McConnell, who was coaching at Wake Forest at the time, I uh, got to know some different some a lot of those types of people. And um, John Carroll had uh, seen me before um, at these camps, and I, I also was a California PA for two years. And I was on the road. I was, when you co- when I was a grad assistant at Cal, you're allowed to recruit Division two. So I was on the road a lot, even as a as a grad assistant, I met John through there too, and we kind of developed a little bit of a friendship. And then he had an opening and uh, hired me as like the part-time assistant, as it was called back then, uh, for one year. And then we had two guys that left, and I got bumped to the full-time right away. So for three years, I was one of the top assistants at Duquesne, and it, it was special um, to coach at that level. People don't realize um, the time that, that college coaches put in and the stress it is on your family and your life. And 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 to because you know if you don't if you don't win you're 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 gonna be out of a job and uh, we had a, we made a pretty good run the one year we went to the NIT second round uh, we lost to North Carolina Charlotte in the second round of, the, of that tournament um, I'm sorry Villanova we beat Charlotte and then we lost to Villanova in the second round but that was a great experience I mean, I truly love every minute because at that time I was 27 28 years old 28 years old and I was single flying all over the country. You know, say, hey, I, John would say, hey, there's a kid in Kansas City. Can you get on a plane this afternoon? Like, Absolutely. <laughs> Off I went and thought it was the greatest thing. And um, it was a great experience. But then um, when we didn't win enough the fourth year uh, uh, and John was let go and brought in a new coach and he brought his own staff, and that's kind of where Upper St. Clair comes in. Your, your experience as a graduate assistant uh, or a young coach traveling around the country reminds me of my own experience at uh, West Virginia. 
uh, here I was about 25 or 26 years old, and I was to scout the next opponent. Mm -hmm. You know, well, the first game, the first game I scouted was Pitt versus UCLA in the Coliseum in oh, wow. Los Angeles. Yeah. And I said, no, wait a minute, let me get this straight. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to pay me to get on an airplane, fly to Los Angeles to watch a football <laughs> game? I thought, man, this is a great life. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, those two championships. Let's let's uh, highlight those um, the, the the nature of the games, who you played, um, and how exciting those those games were. Yeah, the first one in 90, 1996 was uh, was a, a, a great story for the upper upper St. Clair kids. We it was my first year, and I'll never forget the first time when I was officially hired. I came to, to the athletic office, and Mike Shelley. He said, "Hey, here's your schedule." And he had scheduled, we, our non-conference schedule was at Butler away, North Allegheny away, Central Catholic, and Shore Valley right out of the gate. And he said, here's your, I looked at him like, I'm like, wow, you talk about getting thrown into the fire. We, and we were two and four. We lost four of the first six games. And, and then, then we kind of regrouped and went on a run. We won um, 17 straight and then, and then ended up winning like, I think maybe 20, then 22, and that catapulted us into the, Championship and, and winning the championship was 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 a great experience. The first one we had in basketball here, uh, but that that championship year more so than the championship game. What I remember most is we played Butler um, in December. I remember the score. We lost sixty-seven to forty-three uh, up there, and it was uh, humiliating. Um, we played them in the quarterfinals a couple months later and beat them by ten. So that really. That was really like the way the program got jump started. We went from trying to figure each other out and trying to learn the system and what we were doing, and and just got on a, got on a run. And two of our key players in that year were were two coaches players, um, Jason Basson and Mac McCardle, played a big role in um, in in that in that process. So uh, that was that was um, that was that was a special one there. Then then in '05, it was it was just. You know, besides Sean Lee, we had five. This is a, another good story. I mean, we had our five starters all played multiple sports. Like Sean and Brandon Delray were football players. Eric Swenson was volleyball. And Cam Griffin and Scott Dilly were soccer players. But they were winners and they were great athletes. And, and they did everything all year round. Too, even though they played multiple sports, our summer league games, our workouts, our weightlifting, when they weren't with their other sport, they were there. And uh, so that was – that was a special year too, and 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 Sean just did. He was just an incredible leader. Uh, not besides the the playing, but but that year is special because the championship game we beat Mount Lebanon. So to win a Whippeal title and then to, then then to beat Mount Lebanon was you had really a pretty good run. athlete coming off the bench on that team too. We we did was, Pat Pat McShane who uh, turned out to be a state championship quarterback, and he he had ten big points in that championship game, and um, yeah, that was a special that was a, that was a special team. Where, where was the the '96 championship game? Where was that? It was at the Palumbo Center. At the Palumbo. Center. Yeah, and that's what was even that was kind of for me. It was even more exciting because I'd spent the last four years of my life at Duquesne at the Palumbo Center. It was like home. I was here all the time, and then to come back one year later and play win the championship there was uh, that was that was pretty nice. All my bu Duquesne buddies were still there. The, you know the f guys you become friends with, the custodians and the, you know, the assistant ads, the sports information directors. All those guys came, and uh, it was really a special special night. And the old five game was where uh in the palumbo center as well that that one as well okay. i think we might have been one of the last games to be at the palumbo center until it changed um, well i have to take that back it's been a it's, it's it was here for a while now it's at the peak but yeah that was at the palumbo center as well that was wasn't that the night that um the game before you went into double or triple triple over? overtime beaver falls and aliquippa i'll never forget that you talk about anxiety we're waiting to get on the court to yeah. play for our championship game in, in overtime another overtime then a third overtime um, it was it was crazy. We got started like an hour late because of that. But that was one of the, maybe one of the best Whippeal Championship yeah. games ever. Yeah, it was. I I can't remember the names, but there were some premier athletes. Yeah, there was uh, one of the Jeters uh, yeah. was uh, was played a huge role for Beaver Falls. Right. Um. At Upper St. Clair, you're also the uh, activities director. Tell us about that and your duties. Yes, that's, that's one of the, another one of the special jobs that I, I really enjoy because I get to know um, a lot of the kids in, in different in different ways uh, outside of the classroom and not on the basketball court, and uh, gives me a great chance to, to to communicate with the student body and 
in, uh, in my office is down near the, um, the nutrition center. So that's kind of nice because every student is in and out of there one, at least once a day, you know, so uh, for lunch and that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's been great. Um, I really – the best thing I like about that job, though, is, is the graduation ceremony because um, you get to see everyone in that entire class graduate. And, you, can, you know, you know these 350-some kids when they're freshmen, and then by the time they graduate, you see them walk across to get their diploma and how they've changed over the, the four years. Uh, I, that's one of the things I really cherish about, about that job is, is the, uh, the, 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 the final night for, for all these kids and see how they, how they develop. So, uh, but we've, yeah, we've, it's been, a, I've had, I've been very, very fortunate. Sheila Lloyd was there for quite some time, um, who uh, did a great job with, with, with helping there. And now I have Brooke Tarson, who's just, uh, she's fabulous. She's really taken it and, at, um, and, and taken it to like another level. We're doing different things and those type of things, but it's, um, it's always great to have. I've been very fortunate to have two people that, in, that have helped make that uh, that job what it is. Um, and then you're also a social studies teacher. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Um, I've been teaching eleventh grade American history for uh, twenty three years now, and uh, I, and and I still enjoy that too uh, uh, quite a bit. I mean they. they Upper St. Clair kids, and Jimmy, you know, I've talked about this before. They're Upper St. Clair kids. I mean, they, there's something about them that I've just always connected with and, and really enjoy. Like, I have uh, 152 juniors this year because I, uh, the academic American history is a is a popular class, and and all 152 of them are, are, I just think, are unique in their own way and have no issues with them, and it's 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 a lot of fun. If you have no issues with 152 mm-hmm. kids, that's uh, miraculous in itself. Yeah, in I mean, my opinion. Yeah, yeah. During during the class period, I you know a lot of teachers and oh, oh you know in, in general throughout the country, you know you worry about a lot of things and, and disruptions and those kind of things. And based on my teaching during the the day, there's not a time where I have to worry or send somebody to the office or those type of things. That kind of from that standpoint is kind of what I'm what I where I mean that there, a lot of them have things that we need to work on. And they have their own personal issues and those type of things. But as a student in the classroom, um, it's it's been really good. Tell our audience about your wife and your son. Uh, yeah, my I, my wife and I are uh, we've been married for 18 years, and um, we uh, we live in Jefferson Hills. And um, she works really hard. She's a full time t- uh, worker at uh, P- for PJ Dick and Trumbull, a local uh, construction company that's um, one of the bigger ones in this area. And she's been with them for uh, she's been with them for them. I think 20 this is her 27th year with with them. Um, so she works. She works really hard. She actually leaves the hospital before I do. She's an early riser, uh, and we have a son Riley who we're very proud of. He's a, currently a junior at TJ, and he plays um, hockey for TJ. They're they're I think five and one right now. And as a junior, he was named one of their captains, which is kind of a special thing. Uh, and uh, he plays amateur hockey as well. And he he did. I did, I coached him from f- like third grade to eighth grade as basketball on his travel team. I coached the TJ travel basketball team up until eighth grade and, and and coach i'm sure you can relate re, 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 uh, can relate to this there'd be times we'd come home and 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 uh, and i even as a fifth and sixth grader i'd say riley you, you, you know you didn't do this you got to do that and, and my wife would say stop you know you won the game i think he played really well and i said no he needs to do this he needs to do that so that was always a, a, a challenge but fine we you know we made it fun but then in eighth grade going to ninth grade he tried out for the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins was a 15U elite team, and he made it, and that kind of changed everything to where he couldn't play basketball now, so it's just hockey. And, um, yeah, he's a, can't, I can't believe he's going to graduate in a year and a half. He's a junior now? He's a junior now, yes, at TJ. Is he going to be good enough to play college hockey? I, I think so, yeah. He wants to play. Um, he'll be like – I don't he won't be like an NCAA Division One player or anything like that, but he'll, but there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of – like Division Three and club hockey teams are in the uh, um, that 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 he could play for that they've already contacted him so uh, so he he wants to do that so he'll play somewhere. We better talk also a little bit about the team coming up. Uh, how does your club look for 2019-2020? Well, I'll, I'm going to have to go to a good old, good old coaching cliche, <laughs> but I'm cautiously optimistic. I really do think uh, we have a chance to be a good, really good team. Uh, we have. A lot of guys back from last year that played a lot. Now, we started four seniors last year, but we had um, uh, seven or eight other underclassmen that, that played a lot and, and did a great job with the JV 
and have done a great job this summer. So I, I'm, I, I think we have a chance to be a really good team, very similar to last year. Like last year, we, we, tr we pressed a lot and played up-tempo, and I think that's what we're going to do this year as well. Um, we, and we certainly have the, the people that can, that can uh, step in and take the, um, the starting roles that, that uh, four seniors had last year. So, um, and two of them have already proven what athletes they are. Two of our guys, you know, David Pantelis and, and Ethan Dallimer are playing football right now, and I think they'll be a big part of our, of our team. And uh, we have uh, great seniors. Again, we have five seniors, uh, names that you'll hear, that um, have really done a great job in the offseason. Josh Russell and Andrew Casey, Zach Kingseed, Landon Roush, and Jack Moore um, all have, um, you know, kind of waited their turn. They, they haven't started yet, but they're like program players. They've, they've worked from, from, from day one to get to their senior year. Like they've waited their turn. Now their turn's here and they're, re they're ready to go. And then we have a tremendous uh, junior guard, Luke Gensler, who's been a two year starter. He was an all section player last year. And he, he's back along with Ethan and David. And, um, and then we have Luke Banbury, uh, who we're expecting to help us as well. Came, came from Seat LaSalle and he's on the football team as well. So there's a lot of other young Is guys. Is Casey too. Uh, quicker than his father? Yes. <laughs> Sean, will, Sean will tell it. Will agree with me on that one too. Sean was one of our guests on this show recently, and he told we, we didn't have to bring these stories out. He told them one himself about when he played for Jim Leland, and speed wasn't one of the things that they discussed unless it was <laughs> and unless it was he was told don't steal. <laughs> I, lo I I love hearing the Sean stories and, and and listen to Sean on the radio. There's he's he is. He's something else. No matter where you go, right? No matter where he, where he is or what he does, it's uh, it's it's enthusiasm and 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 speaking of Andrew, I remember Andrew. I told uh, we were at a, one of our games, and before the game, Sean came in and we're talking. He had a couple of his friends with him, and you know how he, he gets. It, we're talking. Everything's animated. I looked at Andrew. I said, Andrew. I said, wherever your whenever your dad comes in into somewhere, I said it's like a circus, isn't it? He said, Coach, if we go to Giant Eagle, it's a circus. <laughs> <laughs> and he started laughing so it was good yeah yeah Sean's a, gr a great guy uh, Kent to Culvey's the same way when Teak would go yeah to Giant Eagle he'd be gone for hours because he's such a great guy and talk to people etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm -hmm. um, your club I hear coaches talk about that transition from football to basketball what's that how big a transition is that well I, I think uh at first, it might be a transition with uh, with the skill part of the game, but but our football guys have always come from like seasons where they have won and they and they have that winning attitude, and they have that toughness and grit. So when they come in, they they can step in and 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 play and, and do a lot of things, particularly defensively, just because of the of the style of athlete that they are. It does take a little bit of time to get your shooting um, uh, your shooting stroke back and those kind of things, uh, but. Um, you know, whenever uh, whenever they come back, it makes a difference even in practice because everything kind of kind of picks up because they're they're part of the team. And now it's like, okay, we have our whole we have the entire team here now, and and it's, the, the excitement kind of steps it up a little bit. So it's, um, you know, it's it's different for every school, um, but for us, it's always it's 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 never it's always been a positive thing once once they get back. Um, but does um. Is it wise when you have football players that they're in the playoffs for an extended period of time, is it wise to give them time off and say, hey, just don't do anything for a couple of weeks? Or do you find that the players would rather just jump jump from one sport yeah. to the next? I've always kind of let them decide. You know, you know, what, what, do what you think. You're, like, you know your body. If you want to take a week off, you can take a week off. If you think you're ready to go, you want to get back in the gym, you want to try to, you know, um, uh, um, go right away that that's fine also I kind of like read the situation based on the individual and, and everybody's been different some some kids needed a week mentally and physically and and uh, some well I'll, I'll use Sean Lee as an example I think when you guys played Central Catholic in the semifinals and Sean had a broken thumb but that following Monday he didn't practice but he was in the gym like shooting and doing all kind of stuff and that's just the way he was built so but then there's been other guys that needed time whether they had a minor injury or just needed a mental uh, break um, so I've, I've pretty much, and I'll do the same this year too, whenever they finish, you, you guys, when you're ready, you know, I don't want to push them back into when they might not be ready, but, um, you know, other coaches are different. I think there's other basketball coaches that are like, okay, that football's over. They got to come right, right now. And I, and, and, and that's, uh, you know, it's a long season. 
You know, you want to get, you want to be ready to play. You want to play your best in February. And I want them to be fresh in February, not worn out or you know, there's nagging injuries that, that need to be that need to be taken care of uh, sometimes. So, so kind of play it that way. What about uh, the fact that Timbo's no longer coaching the boys over there at Char Valley? You miss uh, the going head to head with Tim? Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> We, in all those years, what was amazing, we're like we're best of friends, but when us and Char Valley, when they were in our section, I mean, those games were for conference titles and playoff and those type of things, and and it was really hard. And we, um, you know, we probably have two to few coaches that on on a game day, two or three hours prior, would be on the phone or something or laughing about something or doing something. But but for the game, that thirty two minutes is, is the only time that just you kind of blocked it out and didn't know that he was down there but it is different for having him down there and uh he's just an incredible coach in person once you get to know him he he's he's like he reminds me of a sean casey like when timbo enters a room it's 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 it's, it's you know everybody's paying attention and he's he takes the room and it's, it's like it's like a circus i had called him i wanted the three of us to go out and celebrate his uh state championship mm-hmm. last year he still hasn't found time to uh, <laughs> for us. To we'll have to do that sometime. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, for sure. Every time I have an opportunity to sit with Coach Render and a coach such as yourself, I, uh, I'm. It's heartwarming for me to, as as a member of used to be in this community. But you guys both have done such fabulous work taking care of young people. You know, being there, right there for them. And, and having those memories with these these young people. Congratulations to both of you. And Danny, thanks very much for for joining us on our on our our show and for being with us and good luck in the season. Well, thank you very well much. For you. And thanks for having me. I really appreciate I'd it. I'd like to say one last thing uh, to the Upper St. Clair community. Danny Holzer is a very class act and uh, we're very fortunate to have him. He's he's the only male teacher uh, that wears a necktie and presents himself as the old time professionals that we all grew up with. So uh, we're, we're very lucky to have Danny. Oh. Congrats. Thank you very much, Coach. And, I, and I'll just tell you the past 25 years watching your teams play have, have been uh, have been a, a great thing to do. I, I've always marveled at how you guys would find ways to win all the time. So it's uh, it's been a wonderful. Uh, riding your coattails (laughs) they won in spite of me (laughs) Danny thanks again thank you and thank you you for joining us for 15241 Today Talk thanks again to Linda Denzinski and to Glenn Ward and keep watching for more shows 